Most Christians are familiar with the imagery and implications of the Heavenly Father, God, getting a bride for His Son, the Lord Jesus. But what of the Holy Spirit? The Bible tells us that God is a spirit, and no man has seen God at any time. And yet, the Holy Spirit is symbolized throughout Scripture in many ways. In this study, Seeing the Spirit in the Scriptures, we will discover pictures of the invisible God. Let's join Evangelist Scott Pauley now and get better acquainted with the person and work of the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit is an unseen work. I mean by that, He's working beneath the surface. He's working in hearts. He's working where people can't see and where people can't do their work. And yet, we certainly see the effects of it. It's like the wind. We talked about the Holy Spirit being wind. You can't see wind, but you can see the effects of the wind. Well, in the same way today, we're coming to one of the unspoken symbols of the Holy Spirit. And he is found in John chapter number 15. Now, if you'll permit me just to read a few verses here, the words of Jesus to his first disciples, I want you to listen carefully, and I want you to look through the eyes of faith and see if you can observe the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, John 15, 1, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me, Ye can do nothing. Now, John 15 was spoken on Christ's way to the cross. In fact, it's my conviction that very likely these words were spoken as Jesus walked through the Kedron Valley on his way to the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples. And in Jesus' day, the Kedron Valley would have been full of vines and branches. Uh, Perhaps our Lord, the master teacher, did what he so often did and just stopped and used Uh, some natural thing they were looking at with their physical eyes to open their understanding to a spiritual truth. He's he's the great uh, uh, preacher of parables. He is the one who understands how to use an object lesson to help them see what he's saying. And so he's using this agricultural context uh, to give some eternal truth. And, of course, it is the passage, classic passage, about the fruitfulness that only Christ can produce In our lives. And there's so many symbols here. For example, let's just look at them. Uh, Who is the vine? Well, Jesus answers that right off uh, the beginning of the passage when he says, I am. You hear him using the great I am here? I am the true vine. Not just a vine, the true vine. Uh, He is life, He is the vine. So Christ is the vine. Uh, The branches, what are the branches? We're the branches. I'm the vine, Uh, you're the branches, he says. Oh, isn't that beautiful to think that if you're a believer, you're connected to Jesus, and uh, he is the, he's the tree, he's the life, he's the source, uh, but we are connected to him, and because of that, we're connected to life. So you have Christ, you have the believer, uh, then you have the Father. Who's the Father in the passage? He's the husbandman, he's the gardener, uh, he's the one tending to both the vine and the branches, he's the one who is working Uh, to bring forth so many beautiful things in our lives, the image of Christ in us. And so all praise to the gardener. Uh, the, The branches don't get the glory. The gardener gets the glory. He's the one doing this work. So you have Christ, you have the believer, you have the Father. Then you have the pruning shears. What are the pruning shears that the gardener uses? The Word. Jesus said, This is how you're you're made clean. You're purged through the word which I have spoken unto you. So much symbolism here, isn't there? Then there's fruit. In fact, if you take the whole passage, there's fruit, there's more fruit, there's much fruit, and there's fruit that remains. What is the fruit? 
It is that which only God can produce in our lives, and only God gets the glory for it. You are not called to produce fruit. You are called to bear fruit. Remember, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And so we come uh, to the unspoken symbol and the unseen work of the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit in this passage? You tell me. A Christ is here. The believer is here. The Father is here. The Word of God is here. And the fruit is here. Is the Holy Spirit here? If the fruit is the fruit of the Spirit, is the Holy Spirit here? And the answer is absolutely but is unseen and it's unspoken. What is the work of the Holy Spirit in this passage? Well, could I just point out the most obvious thing? And it is this, uh, that from the vine, there must be a life-giving flow uh, that flows into the branches. If a branch is disconnected from the vine, uh, that flow is broken. What is the flow uh, in a plant, uh, in a tree? Uh, what is that flow? It's the sap. The, the life is in the sap. If there is no sap, if there is no life-giving flow, uh, there is no life. There is no fruit. And my friend, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is the life-giving flow. Now, you can't see him, but you can certainly see the effects when he is flowing unhindered uh, in and through the life of a believer. Now, where does the Holy Spirit come from? Oh, the Holy Spirit of God is sent from our Heavenly Father and comes through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, Jesus said, when I return to the Father, the Father and I will send him to you. So from the Father, from the Son, comes the sweet Holy Spirit of God into the life of every believer. And so he flows from Christ and into us. That happened, of course, on the day of our salvation. The Holy Spirit of God came to indwell every believer. But don't miss this. The Holy Spirit of God was not sent into the believer so you could have him. The Holy Spirit of God was put into the believer so that through the life of the believer, through that branch, every beautiful fruit would blossom and grow and be produced uh, so that others could be fed, so that the Father could be glorified, so that Christ could be seen. In other words, the Holy Spirit of God doesn't just come into the believer he works out of the believer. He flows through the believer. And the sap, this unspoken symbol, this unseen work, is the spirit of the living God. I don't know about you, but I want to be filled today with the Holy Spirit. I want to be so filled with the Holy Spirit today that the fruit of the Spirit begins to be produced in my life. You ought to take that list, uh, the fruit of the Spirit, and say, is this evident in my life? Holy Spirit, thy love today in me, thy joy, thy peace, thy long-suffering, thy gentleness, thy goodness, thy faith, thy meekness, thy temperance, and not me, Holy Spirit. I don't have any of that on my own. No, this is the miraculous work of the Spirit of God in the life of a believer. And I want you to know that when we're not in fellowship with God, when we let sin come between and separate uh, though we are still uh, branches, uh, the, the flow is broken. The, the power is broken. And maybe today you know you're saved. You know the Lord Jesus has saved you and you're connected to him. But I want to ask you, is there something between you and the Lord? Is there something that has, that has dammed up the flow of that life-giving power? Is there something that has, has caused the, the power to be cut off from your life? Deal with that. Uh, let the word prune you and purge you and make you clean today uh, so that the sap, uh, the life, the power of the Holy Spirit of God can flow unhindered through your life. More of the fruit of the Spirit in every one of us. How does that happen? Only through the life-giving flow in our lives. May the power of God's Holy Spirit reside on us as we follow the Lord with our lives. For additional resources about the Holy Spirit, visit enjoyingthejourney.org and click on the search icon. On just the subject of the Holy Spirit, you will find dozens of links to podcasts or sermons in which Scott teaches on the Holy Spirit. Also, if you would like to hear more of Scott's Bible studies and full-length sermons, be sure to visit his YouTube channel, 
Dr. Scott Pauley. We want to thank you for joining us today, and we hope you'll join us next time on Enjoying the Journey.